Hello and good morning to you, my beautiful internet apprentice friends. I'm Morgan Donner and I am so excited to be in my newly reorganized, beautified sewing room space. And I'm doubly excited because it's going to be a sewing day for me. It's been a while. So I've had a few weeks to kind of think about and consider what new sewing project I'd like to do, maybe what outfit I want to make, and I have lists upon lists to look at. I have Pinterest board upon Pinterest board to browse through, but something kind of struck me that I think I've noticed before about myself, and I don't think I'm unique. I, I'm, I'm guessing that other costumers feel maybe the same way, which is that I'll see 20 examples of an item and I go, hmm, okay. And then I see one that's different and I just focus on that different one. There is something about the the interesting, the unique, the different that is really easy to, to, to focus in on and want to make projects for. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I think there's also some value in exploring the ordinary, the common, the everyday. I jokingly mentioned on my sewing room video about my hashtag basic heart, and you know, I think that's the direction I want to go in. Some good old fashioned hashtag basic garb. And what is more basic than a shift? Or chemise, or camiseta, or smock, or shirt. All of which I will probably use interchangeably throughout this video, so heads up. For the past 2000 years, it's been pretty darn common to wear white linen as your base next to skin underwear layer in order to help protect your outer clothing. It's only very recently that we stopped doing that and we kind of went a different direction. So let's go ahead and get started on making a shift. So there are a couple different ways that you could go about getting your shift pattern. One of my absolute favorites is to take a shift that I already own that's fitting pretty well, make any adjustments that I might want for the new shift, and just copy its dimensions down onto the linen. Now if you as a new customer very understandably don't already have a shift to copy, what you can do is grab any non-stretch, no really, non-stretch dress shirts and use that as a guide for your dimensions if you're feeling a little unsure. I did that a lot when I was first learning to sew. It was a really good sort of set of training wheels until I got my confidence up to just take the measurements myself and transfer them to paper. And that of course brings up our third method which is to simply measure the body parts that you need and take those measurements onto your linen. That's what I'm going to do today for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's very helpful for people to see how that works. And two, my piece of linen that I have left is exactly 60 by 60 inches and that's all I have. So I need to be a little bit more careful about specifically planning out exactly how much I can cut for the different pieces. So if you don't already have them, you're going to want to grab a few quick measurements. Things like the width of the torso from shoulder seam to shoulder seam, the bust circumference, under bust, waist, the length of your arm for the sleeves. I like my sleeves to end at the knuckle bones, so that's where I measure too. Be careful when it comes to measuring the circumference of your arm though, because it's tempting to measure the wrist. However, your hand needs to be able to get through that sleeve first. So I usually like to measure the biggest part of my hand instead of my wrist. When it comes to measuring the elbow, I also like to go ahead and bend my elbow, which always increases the measurement by an inch or two. And then the same thing with the bicep. Don't do a loose bicep measurement. You want to measure it flexed or however it is biggest on you. That'll ensure that whenever you're moving around in your stays later, nope, when you're moving around in your shift later on, you aren't feeling constricted or too tight in some areas because you measured them at their smallest width. You wanna measure everything at its biggest. 
Now I will take those measurements and put them onto a bit of graph paper. Maybe I'll do it up nice in the computer for you guys, which is really good for me since I need to double check that I even have enough fabric to continue. I'm going to start out with the total fabric size. Then I'm going to add the items first that I really can't compromise on size with. For example, the sleeve width and length, I really can't go much tighter or much shorter. So I'm going to do those first. The width of the body is also relatively set in stone. I can go bigger, but I really can't go too much smaller. Notice that I didn't measure the length of the body earlier because I knew that the length would be determined by just whatever I had left at this point. So it looks like it's going to be about 44 inches, which is great. That'll end up about mid shin, which is a good length. The very bottom bit here will become the side gores, and this last little part in the corner will become either additional gores or I'll save it for a future project. I'll decide later. For those of you that have never done any pattern drafting, I'm going to break that down just a little more. Let's start with the body width. Using that shoulder measurement of 16, I'll add one inch for seam allowance and one more for good luck. I just kind of really like even numbers. And that is going to become the width of the torso. The bigger you go here, the more your shoulder seam is going to fall off of your shoulder. It works either way. Most of my shifts are a couple inches down from the shoulder, but I'm going to aim just a little bit uh, higher up here if I can today. For the sleeves, I'm going to start out with the length of my arm of 21 inches and adding an extra inch for seam allowance to get 22. I'm going to use the elbow measurement, that stretched elbow measurement, to get the width starting with 13, add an inch for seam allowance, and you know, maybe a couple more because I do like slightly looser shift sleeves to get me a total of 16. Now the wrist, of course, does not need to be 16 inches, so using that hand circumference of 8 plus seam allowance and ease, 10 should be enough. I'll take a little wedge out from the wrist to elbow, and we'll just toss that up here under the arms, completing our sleeve pattern. The side gores are sort of a whatever's left game. I'll start out with 8 inches below the shoulder, because that's where the sleeves are going to go, and then just cut that diagonally across. Now that we have our pattern, go ahead and make sure to double check all of your measurements, particularly verifying that the bust, waist, and hips will still fit, since none of our measurements so far have been using those to create the pattern. If you have particularly wide shoulders but narrow hips or vice versa, it's good to double check that everything is still going to work out for you. Now I can go ahead and cut out all of my various pieces, now that I'm fairly confident that everything will fit just fine on the pattern. So when I attach the side gorge to my tunic, I like... Hi, hi, Catherine. Hi. Can you move, please? Okay, so when combining the side gores onto my tunic edge here, I like to, instead of going straight edge on straight edge, I like to flip the gore so that one, the curve more nicely follows the, the curve that you would want to have at the bottom of the tunic, and you're going to not have the bias sewn to bias effect, which means that that edge will stretch even more over time. So this is a thing I like to do.
I'm using a running back stitch to sew the gores and the body pieces all together. I'm actually offsetting the fabric slightly because I'm going to fold this longer edge down on the inside to create a felt seam. Normally you would sew them at the same length and then trim down the smaller one, but that's an extra step for a garment that doesn't need that level of precision, so I might as well keep the extra quarter inch of fabric. If you're in a little bit of a hurry or just otherwise would like to save some time by machine stitching some of these, these initial construction seams are a pretty good candidate for that because you won't see them on the outside of the garment whenever you're done. Although I do still recommend hand stitching the felling seams since that part will be visible on the outside and a machine top stitch just never looks quite the same. So we are all done sewing those gores on and felling the seams down. Now, normally I would have cut the shoulder of this sort of garment all in one piece from back to front, but because of the limitations of my fabric size, I did have to go ahead and cut the front and the back as two separate pieces. So next up, I'm going to want to combine those two together, just the same way, running stitch and then fell the seam allowance down. Now that the shoulder seam is all finished up, my body piece is now one long piece and I can start attaching the sleeves. To do that, I'm folding the sleeves in half, creasing the center point, and then matching the center point with that new shoulder seam. I'm going to sew that the same way with a running back stitch initially and then felling the seam allowance down in. Now that my side seams are done, it is actually starting to look something like a tunic, which is very exciting. I love seeing projects as they get closer and closer to completion because they start to look more and more like the thing they're meant to be. Very cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and try it on, but before I can do that, I do want to baste the side seams closed. I'm not going to do the actual running back stitch yet because I want to 
verify that everything is fitting nicely and it'd be a shame to undo nice stitching if I find out that I do need to give myself a little bit of extra room. So just some quick basting in the black thread here. All right, so my basting stitches are all done. My side seams are temporarily sewn together. And then I wanna go ahead and cut a hole in the top here for my head to go through. I'm not 100% sure on exactly what I want my neckline to look like. So if you wanted to, you could just simply guess where you want your neckline to be, but because I already know what dress this is going to go with, or rather what dress pattern it's gonna go with, what I'm gonna do instead is cut a hole just barely big enough for me to get my head through and no more. And then I'm gonna try this on and that dress over top and mark out the proper neckline as closely as I can to the dress that I know it's gonna go with. All right, so now I have my new in-progress shift underneath my dress. If you don't already have a dress to use as a guide, that's all right, just guess. But since I am lucky enough to have a, a dress already, what I'm going to do is trace around the neckline here, use that as a guide for cutting and then hemming. So that was not too bad. I have it all marked out. It probably would have been clever of me to wait until I had someone else in the house to help me mark, especially the back. It's a little bit hard with that overdress to do a lot of range of motion and particularly not without adjusting the line of the thing that I'm wanting to mark anyway. So I was able to improvise and make a tool that I'm not sure was necessarily the most effective thing in the world, but I was able to go ahead and mark off the back portion of the shift, and now I can take this off and start hemming all of these. Oh, and before I forget, I am pretty happy with the fit, so these basting stitches, I can now take those out and do the proper side seam stitches. I was a little bit worried that this was going to be too tight, particularly around the bust, but it's just right. This is not a problem. If you were to try on your new shift and it's either tight in the chest or really tight around the arm, then you could add a square gusset here underneath the arm but I'm not gonna worry about it. So there are going to be some marks left over here from the pencil, but those should come out with the first wash, and this is the inside, so if nothing else, it shouldn't be terribly visible from the outside anyway. Definitely don't use something like pen, that'll bleed through. So for the neckline here, in order to turn the hem in, I'm actually going to roll it with my fingers just by taking it in my hands here and then sort of mushing, rolling it down. This doesn't work with all fabrics, but linen is usually a pretty good sport and happy about rolling. So you can see here it's staying rolled and now I can stitch this. And then you just keep on going along, rolling as needed. And wrapping it over your finger to do more stitching as you go. However, if you're doing a rounded neckline like I am here, you're eventually going to come across a part of the neck where it's at a 45 degree angle or a bias angle, and it's not going to want to stay turned the same way. Like, it, it kind of will. But if you're having trouble with any particular section, what you can do is just fold it down as narrowly as you can and then use the needle to sort of tuck it down in and then hold on to that piece and do more stitching.
All right, so I'm all done. After uh, yards and yards of hemming all the different little bits and pieces that needed to be hemmed, I have a new smock, which is very exciting. And what's cool about a good shift is that even though I did trace this off of one particular dress's neckline, and I, I have a couple of dresses that are based off that same pattern, so this will work pretty well with any of those. Even so, I should be able to wear it with other dress styles because that's what I do. I wear almost all of my shifts with almost all of my dresses. Some work better than others, but you can still manipulate a round neckline into a square one if you need to or vice versa. But this is just a really, really great basic to have in your arsenal. It's good for literally hundreds of years, which is fantastic, and I hope that you guys consider adding one to your own collection if you haven't already. And if you are someone who has not done any sewing, any historical sewing in particular, a good rectangular construction outfit is a great way to start. It's almost all straight seams. Uh, you can really learn a lot with relatively low stakes and barrier to entry. So I find these uh, rectangular construction early shifts to be a really, really good starter project. Thank you for joining me on my hashtag basic garb journey here. I'm really excited to go to costume college at the end of this week, but once I'm back, I'd like to get started on a good, basic, solid, normal, everyday sort of dress, the, the foundation layer type dress that one would wear. I'm thinking that I'm going to aim for, I think, late 1400s, uh, almost that really early Tudor style. We'll see. We'll see what I end up actually doing. But uh, I'm excited to get started and share it with all of you guys.